On July 1st, a speck lit up the sky surveys over Chile. By the next day, it wasn't just a speck, it was history. Only the third visitor ever confirmed to have come from beyond our solar system. Astronomers named it 3I Atlas. Most stories would end there. This one didn't, because the closer scientists looked, the stranger it seemed. Not dangerous, not ordinary, just unsettlingly precise. Interstellar objects are rare. We've officially logged just two before, Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2019. Atlas changed that in a heartbeat. The telescope picked up a fast mover on a hyperbolic path, meaning it's unbound and just passing through. The orbit screamed outsider, the speed fit the picture, and the designation became official, C2025N1, better known as 3I Atlas. Right away, the scale sparked debate. Size estimates bounced around because brightness plays tricks. A dusty coma can make a small nucleus look big. A clean surface can make a medium one look like polished chrome. Early numbers hinted anywhere from a few miles across to much larger if reflectivity was high. Most agreed on a wide range, not a single number, until better photometry could pin it down. The important part, it wasn't a pebble. It was a substantial body from somewhere else entirely. That alone would be headline enough, but Atlas wasn't done surprising people. But the orbit didn't just say interstellar, it whispered something far more provocative. Here's where eyebrows went up. Most random visitors slice through the solar system at awkward angles. Atlas threads the ecliptic, the plane where our planets live, on the retrograde path tilted by only a few degrees. That's like a tourist stepping off a plane and somehow merging into rush hour traffic in the correct lane, except moving the opposite direction. Possible? Absolutely. Probable? Depends on who you ask. A few loud voices argued the alignment is too neat to be coincidence. They pointed to the timing of near passes by multiple planets, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, as if the route had been drawn with purpose. Some calculated low probabilities for that choreography, tossed out numbers like 1 in 20,000, and asked the question you're already thinking, what are the odds? But odds are slippery. Nature rolls weird dice all the time. A close pass isn't a handshake, and the ecliptic plane is a big sheet. Still, perception matters. The more clean the trajectory looked in public plots, the faster the debate caught fire. If you wanted to be seen, this is the kind of path you'd choose. If you were a comet, this could just be the luck of initial conditions from a distant star's debris belt. Then the big guns turned toward Atlas, and the chemistry started talking. As data rolled in, the narrative shifted from mystery glint to active physics. The James Webb Space Telescope captured spectra that lit up with carbon dioxide, lots of it, along with water, carbon monoxide, dust, and ices. Not a tidy mirror, not a silent shard, a breathing comet, venting volatiles in the sunward direction. That detail matters. Sunward outgassing drives small, steady pushes. It makes tails grow. It explains brightness boosts that look too clean from far away. Ground-based observatories joined in, reporting a faint coma at first and then more obvious activity as Atlas moved inward. Later images revealed a tail like a soft thread stretching away from the sun. That's classic comet behavior. Does it erase every oddity? No. Does it undercut the polished plate idea? Strongly. So what about those claims of a perfectly balanced spin or a light curve that refuses to flicker? Early photometry over a few days showed minimal variation, but that can happen when geometry, viewing angle, and coma all conspire to smooth the signal. A calm light curve doesn't force an artificial conclusion. It can also mean the nucleus isn't dramatically elongated, or that dust is filling in the rough edges our instruments would normally notice. In short, the new data leaned natural. Not boring, just explainable. And every time the chemistry sharpened, the alien paneling narrative took a step back. But science isn't the only voice in the room. The internet is louder, and patience is thin. When a rare object arrives, two stories race each other. One is the slow, careful climb of data. The other is the sprint of speculation. 
Atlas was no different. Threads popped up claiming patterns in infrared readings, hints of engineered materials, and the idea that agencies were curiously quiet. Some even suggested documents were redacted and teams reassigned. Here's what the public record actually shows. Observing proposals, ephemerides, and Broly spectra were published or pre-printed. JWST teams posted carbon dioxide-rich coma results. Planetary defense blogs and newsrooms summarized what was confirmed and what wasn't. In other words, the usual flood of measurement with the usual caveats that early numbers change. Meanwhile, a familiar figure stepped back into the spotlight with a provocative question. Could Atlas be artificial? Papers floated what-if frameworks. Probability snapshots were tweeted. The media took the bait, because media always takes the bait. But that's not the same as evidence. It's a conversation starter, not a conclusion. And we've lived this arc before. Oumuamua's odd acceleration launched years of arguments until a straightforward explanation, hydrogen outgassing from irradiated ice, dropped the temperature. Not every puzzle needs aliens. Sometimes the universe is just messy in a very specific way. So what about the blackout narrative? If anything, the pattern so far has been more transparent than secretive. Open datasets, peer-reviewed pipelines, telescope press pages explaining what's known and unknown. Does that end conspiracy talk? Never. But it gives you a way to weigh the claims. Ask a simple question. Are the people with the instruments showing their work? With Atlas, the answer keeps looking like yes. If the drama isn't in secrecy, it might be in what's still to come. The calendar is part of the story. Atlas sneaks closest to the sun around late October. Earth sits on the far side then, which complicates direct viewing in some bands. After that, as geometry improves, activity should peak and then fade. The closest Earth distance will still be a comfortable gap. No danger here, just a front row seat. What matters is the behavior. If the tail grows, if the CO2 to H2O ratio stays unusual, if the dust spreads and the coma brightens as expected, the natural comet from another system case gets stronger and stronger. We'll learn where it likely formed, near a CO2 ice line perhaps, or inside a hostile radiation environment that altered its crust. If instead activity stays weirdly flat, accelerations don't track outgassing, and the light curve refuses to budge even as viewing angles change, the debate will roar back. Scientists will be watching for rotation period, jets, fragmentation risks, and the chemical fingerprints that pin down origin stories. Amateur astronomers will chase it in long exposures as it brightens. And yes, the headlines will keep swinging between wonder and what if. That leaves one last question, and it's the one nobody can resist. If you wanted to be noticed, how would you cross a strange star's backyard? You'd pick a path that grabs attention. You'd shine just enough. You'd drift through the plane where planets circle, because that's where eyes live. Atlas does some of that. Nature can do all of it. Maybe that's the joke the cosmos keeps telling us. Physics is already dramatic. It doesn't need an author. But here's the fun part. Whether Atlas is a carbon dioxide-rich comet from an ancient metal-poor neighborhood of the galaxy, or just the beautiful statistical oddball that wandered into our field of view, it's a test of how we react. Do we jump to conclusions, or do we let the data lead? Watch the tale. Watch the chemistry. Watch the steady hands on the instruments. Then tell me, in a month, in two, when the sun stops hiding secrets, does this feel like choreography or just another spectacular, inconvenient truth about how big and weird the universe is? And if someone out there did want us to see them, here's a thought. Maybe the first message wouldn't be a broadcast. Maybe it would be a question. Can you tell the difference between noise and intention? That's what Atlas leaves us with right now. A riddle, an invitation to pay attention, and the promise that the next time we look up, the story will have changed again. <laughs>